The colors, red and green, are often used to depict the dynamics between good and evil. In Western society, the former is used to indicate toxic and immoral traits in an individual, and the latter is an indication of the positive and admirable attributes. But how are these two harmless colors understood when they're associated with superheroes? The Marvel Universe's most muscular and physically invincible superhero character is the Hulk. The ripped green superhuman with a crazy physiological structure has been a key member of the Avengers since its inception. Although not as much is known about his parallel, different colored counterpart, Red Hulk, what becomes evident is that anything red is surely wicked and wacky. The Red Hulk transformation has primarily been associated with two different characters, the first being General Thunderbolt Ross, a longtime Hulk villain, and the second one being General Robert Maverick. Ross as Red Hulk is more like a villain turned anti-hero, whereas Robert as Red Hulk is part of the US Avengers. Ross is desperate to capture Bruce Banner and tame his Green Hulk form, whereas Robert is focused on settling scores with longtime X-Men member Roberto da Costa, aka Sunspot. The powers of the two don't vary extensively, but Ross's Red Hulk form provides him with regenerative healing power. Meanwhile, Robert's Red Hulk form does more bad to his health than good. So without further ado, let's dive right into the story behind the forbidden superhuman Red Hulk. Before we get into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. The Origin of the Red Hulk in the Marvel Comics, Red Hulk is a fairly novel character given he made his first appearance in the February 2008 issue of The Incredible Hulk. There are multiple versions of the origins of the Red Hulk. The oldest revolves around General Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross. Ross had been an authoritative figure in the US military who had taken a disliking towards Bruce Banner's superhero form, the Hulk. Ross views Hulk as a threat to human civilization and is adamant about capturing him. His antagonism and desperation for the green bulked superhero drives him to undergo dangerous scientific self-experiments. To defeat Hulk, Ross teamed up with Dr. Emil Blonsky and Dr. Samuel Stearns to create a superhuman serum 2.0. The serum had been made by merging Hulk's DNA with that of another mysterious being called the Juggernaut, Kane Marco. He then injects the serum and subjects himself to some weird gamma radiation that enables his transformation into the Red Hulk. Since the Red Hulk possesses the genetic material of the Incredible Hulk, he also possesses the resultant powers, such as superhuman strength, a gigantic muscular body, durability, and speed. Who is Robert Maverick? Let's find out. General Robert L. Maverick, better known as Robert Bob Maverick, is a former U.S. Army colonel and a close friend of General Thaddeus Ross. Rob had been actively involved in Project Troubleshooter, which was the U.S. government's off-record sinister facility that conducted experiments to produce lethal human weapons. This is the very project that turned Corporal Todd Ziller into a monstrous gigantic lizard, the American Kaiju. Not to mention, Kaiju is insanely gross to look at as well. This this procedure was conducted under the supervision of Robert Maverick. Similarly, Maverick was also involved in the experiment that turned Thunderbolt Ross into the Red Hulk initially. Maverick was the commanding officer overseeing the operation where Kaiju had attacked AIM facilities on Avengers Island. This version of AIM was actually the Avengers Idea Mechanics, and they were a reformed version of the original scientific terrorist organization, the Advanced Idea Mechanics. Roberto da Costa, aka Sunspot, is the supreme leader of AIM during this time. Its ultimate objective is to lead international rescue operations. The organization consists of a dedicated and able group of scientists, engineers, and superheroes called the New Avengers. Due to its mysterious nature and unconventional operation tactics, the US government disapproved of the operation and they were fairly disliked by S.H.I.E.L.D. as well. Thus, when AIM, under the guidance of Roberto da Costa, conducts an operation to rescue Rick Jones from S.H.I.E.L.D.'s facility, it's considered an act of war by the US government. Rick Jones, who's going by the name Whisperer at the time, is a young science enthusiast who is currently legally wanted because half a year ago he happened to hack Shield's system and leak details about a confidential and shady security program mission codenamed Kobik. It is then revealed that Kobik allows Shield to use cosmic cube fragments and alter reality without any public awareness or approval. The Whisperer was forced underground after his whistle blew up and he reached out to aim for help. In retaliation for this daring and supposedly illegal act, which kinda triggered Shield's fragile ego, General Robert Maverick calls for the release 
base of Kaiju to lead the battle against AIM and the supposed New Avengers. Soon after Maverick's suggestion to the President of the United States, three choppers make their way to the AIM facility on Avengers Island. One of the choppers contains Robert Maverick, who has in his hands the remote control device to command Kaiju. When the scientists and engineers of AIM notice the arrival of the choppers, they're not surprised that S.H.I.E.L.D. reached out to them before the U.S. government. Technically, we're a rogue state of mad scientists with no serious allies, and we've just conducted an illegal operation on U.S. soil. Sure, we're the easy target for Uncle Sam's win, says Roberto da Costa. Their head of engineering, Dr. Tony Ho, finds it fishy that S.H.I.E.L.D. only sent three helicopters in retaliation, but she's soon informed about an unidentified movement of something about a half click ahead of the choppers under the water, and it's big. The new Avengers have no freaking clue that this movement is because of Maverick's scientifically fanatic creation, the American Kaiju. Despite being caught unawares, their leader Sunspot acts quickly and decides to mobilize their secret Avenger 2. Meanwhile, Robert Maverick, seated in one of the choppers, is eagerly awaiting permission for the launch of his newly created super soldier weapon of mass destruction, Kaiju. And soon, on his command, the gigantic monster rises from the sea, plastered with American flags all over its body and gritting its teeth, shocking everyone on Avengers Island. It groans, it howls, and it reaches out towards the scientific facilities on the island ready to wreck them. The evacuation and defense operation against Kaiju is being led by the new Avengers Clint Barton, Hawkeye, and Melissa, aka Songbird. Their special guest, Rick Joins, also joins to assist. They kept aiming shots and arrows at the Kaiju, but their weapons were peanuts compared to his unconventional physical strength. But before its assault could begin, a turquoise brightening portal emerges out of thin air behind the American Kaiju. Within seconds, another strange creature advances out of the portal and knocks down the ugly, monstrous super soldier. It's none other than Avenger 5, AIM's very own Quintronic Man. Quintronic is a gigantic, metallic, mechanized, and computerized robot that's been designed with a multi-user gestalt exoskeleton. It needs five friends connected in parallel, linked with the main power source, Aiku Jokinen, aka the Pod, to be operated. The ultra-advanced robotic creation is also armed with various repulsor weapon systems to effectively attack unprecedented enemies enemies that could annoy the new Avengers from time to time. Seeing the unexpected attack on Kaiju, S.H.I.E.L.D. agent John Garrett orders the release of the ground unit fighters on AIM and Avengers Island. Songbird and Hawkeye try to keep the S.H.I.E.L.D. force personnel occupied so that the evacuation at the back end is executed as per their plan. But here's the twist. Songbird suddenly attacks Clint with her sonic powers and reveals that all this while she's been working as an undercover S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. Damn. Clint is more disappointed and angry at this revelation than shocked and he can't wrap his head around the fact that Songbird could do this to everyone at AIM, including him, because he trusted her so much. She doesn't try to reason with Clint, but requests he surrender and return to S.H.I.E.L.D., but before she can explain any further, she's whacked down by a flying shield from behind her. That shield was sent flying by none other than the Whisperer, S.H.I.E.L.D.'s ultimate target, Rick Jones. Rick is now all live and unleashed. He smashes down into the ground with the powerful armor gauntlet he won in a poker game and escapes along with Hawkeye. Meanwhile, the combat between the two giant super soldiers, Quintronic Man and the American Kaiju is getting more intense. The multi-consciousness controlled robot, Avenger 5, is continuously throwing punches at Kaiju without giving it a chance to retaliate but it's not sugar and spice and everything nice for the new Avengers. Kaiju soon blocks the blow of the giant robot and fiercely retaliates. Meanwhile, the evacuation portal is running out of time and has to be closed soon to ensure a safe departure for all the associates and inhabitants of Avenger Island. Clint and Rick even make it in time, but the latter bails when he learns that they're going to escape to Avenger 2, which is actually the core base camp of AIM, and the now Avenger Island had been a decoy. It's a pretty crazy revelation, and Clint even tries to bring Rick back, but is interrupted by S.H.I.E.L.D. agents and has to fight them. As a result, the evacuation ends, leaving Clint behind and he is later brought into custody by S.H.I.E.L.D. officers Dum Dum Dugan and John Garrett. So are the new Avengers about to be defeated? Hell no. The Supreme Leader Roberto pulls out the big guns at the last moment. He asks all five Avengers controlling the Quintronic Man to vent out the gamma reactor on his signal and they abide. Captain Rob Maverick, who all this while had been grinning to himself while anticipating his victory over AIM, was now appalled by this new development. He's dumb struck and infuriated when he realizes that the gamma enhancements are forcing Kaiju, or Ziller, back into his human form. And just like that, like a house of cards, the gigantic robotic structure collapses on itself in the water. Robert Maverick is then informed that the new Avengers, along with all the inhabitants of the facility, have escaped and have burnt down the portal to ensure that they can't be followed. While this particular battle might have been over, Robert Maverick vows to himself to come after Roberto da Costa soon and come back more prepared and powerful than ever before. 
How does Robert Maverick become the Red Hulk? Maverick's transformation can be traced back to Roberto da Costa's conflict with Reed Richards, or the Maker. This alternate reality version of Reed was also a foundational member of his Fantastic Four. He assumes the identity of the Maker in the Ultimate Universe, aka Earth 1610, a completely separate cosmic designation from the primary Marvel Universe, Earth 616. His role as the Maker is antagonistic, however, as he aims at redesigning the multiverse according According to his subjective vision of perfection. The Maker represents the darker and villainous version of Reed Richards, who has used his scientific intellect and advanced technological abilities to achieve the devious goal of altering the complex reality of Earth-616. He also creates the Whisper, technically a scientific terrorist organization to facilitate this evil goal of his into reality. This soon leads to a high-stakes confrontation between the Maker and Sunspot. Sunspot, with his ability to absorb and project solar energy, makes him a formidable opponent against the technology technologically advanced maker. After a series of intense and dramatic battles between the two, Sunspot eventually triumphs and prevents the universe from falling victim to the maker's dystopian goals. After defeating the maker, DaCosta decides to hand him over to the US government and General Mavic in order to bury the hatchet and be in their good graces and foster cooperation between them. This unexpected allegiance resulted in AIM becoming a subunit under SHIELD and working amicably with the US government as the American intelligence mechanics. With another AIM rebrand, Maverick became became a member of the US Avengers. He then decides to inject himself with the Hulk plug-in, which is a genetic enhancement device aimed at controlling and managing the Hulk's transformations. The device is surgically implanted and it enables transformation into the Hulk and the use of all his powers and abilities. The device could be activated for an entire hour every 36 hours, but things soon go haywire when Kyle, a Hydra double agent, takes advantage of Robert's feeble physical state as the time limit of Red Hulk approaches. Kyle offered Robert nanites that allowed Hydra to take control of Red Hulk's body and powers, bypassing the safety mechanism. The nanites inside Maverick's Red Hulk body were misused by Hydra to take control of the US administration. Thus, the Red Hulk begins attacking his teammates and creating havoc in public. Red Hulk is captured by Hydra and put in jail along with his other teammate, Tony Ho. In the cell, he realizes that Roberto da Costa has also been imprisoned as he was attacked and captured by another Hydra double agent, Larry. As Roberto recovers, he manages to burn the nanites in Maverick's bloodstream so that he can overpower the guards and take control of the prison to enable their escape. Reverting back to normal. Unlike Thunderbolt Ross, who can transform into Red Hulk as often as he wants, General Mavic's Red Hulk can't do this. Thus, his transformation lasted 800 times longer than what it ideally should have. Moreover, Maverick had to undergo a painfully long process to revert to his original form because remaining as Red Hulk beyond the safe period was leading to serious health deterioration. Post the recovery procedure, Robert was suffering from heart damage, high blood pressure, bone density loss, muscle tearing, and his skin pigmentation permanently turned red. Even though Maverick still had access to the Hulk plug-in, using it would be nothing less than a suicide mission. After the Hulk plug-in's time was up, Red Hulk was stationed back at the Avengers Auxiliary Headquarters, which was an underground basement warehouse that was set up by Tony Stark to allow Avengers refuge and temporary relocation in case of emergencies. When the contest was nearing its completion, the final pyramid was swiftly teleported by Voyager, who was Grandmaster's secret player, to the Auxiliary HQ, where she had locked herself in the safe room along with the pyramid. To retrieve the pyramid on behalf of the Challenger, the resurrected Hulk stormed the HQ. Soon, the two Hulks engaged in combat with Red Hulk armed with Tony Ho's Iron Patriot armor. This wasn't any ordinary armor as it had the ability to fire concussive beams. The suit additionally granted the user the ability to fly. However, despite all the outstanding capabilities of the armor, Maverick barely escaped the Hulk's blows and punches. The Hulk soon drains out all the gamma radiation from the Hulk plug-in and Maverick returns to his normal human skin color. Maverick is finally saved when Vision distracts the Hulk and meanwhile Quicksilver, Wanda's twin brother, comes to his rescue. Red Hulk's Powers and Abilities The list of the Red Hulk's powers is pretty extensive and it's actually longer than the regular Hulk. Red Hulk has incredible super strength and is believed to be on the same level as the Hulk physically. This can be witnessed when Red Hulk collapses the Secret Empire's Volcano Island floating base by just crash landing into it. He has crazy superhuman strength and he could just clap with both his hands to generate a powerful sonic vibration that propagates throughout the air and would knock down his opponent in an instant. With superhuman strength, the Red Hulk also has superhuman durability. Given that Red Hulk has to fight with some pretty sturdy villains, he displays an insanely high degree of resistance to physical injury that could squash any normal human or a superhuman of a lesser ability. Red Hulk also displays military tactics and effective hand-to-hand -hand combat skills that Maverick possesses by virtue of being a trained and experienced soldier.
A marvelous verdict. To conclude, Robert Maverick as Red Hulk has been a fairly interesting, fairly crazy, and also fairly dangerous Marvel character. He's a scientific fanatic, and he adores the idea of encouraging insane superhuman scientific experiments like the one done on Corporal Todd Ziller to turn him into the mammoth mutated lizard, American Kaiju. He's also courageous, given that he endangered his life to become the Red Hulk and was actually excited to make use of the Hulk plug-in once again. Even though his relationship with Roberto da Costa begins on a sour note, the two come to each other's rescue when both of them have been captured in Hydra's jail cells. Given his color, Red Hulk might initially appear as a big bad guy, but we soon realize that he was, for the most part, not such a bad dude. That's all we got for you this time, but don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. This is Wizard Wheezy signing off, but you can always find me on Twitch. Thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day.